everyone, Nate Payne here, and I've got something really cool to share with you today. This is a brand new product by Beta FPV. It was just announced, um, and it is their F4 flight controller. This is a brushed flight controller, and you can check out a link in the video description below for the full uh, product page, but they were kind enough to send one to me in advance, so I've got it right here. I'm going to be taking a look and sharing it with you. Um, other than the F4 processor, it's got some really interesting features, so I can't wait to get this in the air. Let's cut straight to some flight footage. I had a lot of fun flying this, so check it out, and then we'll talk about the board. So here you can see it up close. This is your F411 processor, Beta FPV logo. This is the FR Sky version 1.0. And now this processor is kind of the obvious feature of the flight controller, right? This, uh, you know, an F4 processor is going to give you a little bit higher clock rate. This is 100 megahertz. Um, so you shouldn't have to worry about CPU utilization if you turn on all the features or run 8K uh, PID loop. I'll be checking that out. Uh, but that's kind of the obvious feature. Something I'm actually really interested in is hiding right here between these and right here. And those are the FETs. The FETs drive power to these brushed motors. And these are huge for a board like this. These are rated for 30 amps. And the idea is they have a uh, lower resistance and that means less voltage sag under a heavy load situation, a punch out or hard turn, um, and maybe even better performance at the lower end of the battery uh, when the voltage is starting to get low. Um, I will be looking for that, see if I can tell the difference in the flight, but that is a really interesting feature um, that I did not expect on this flight controller. All right, and if I flip it over, you can see the top side. Uh, what do we have here? This is the MPU6000 gyro. You know it's the gyro because it's the one chip that's facing the actual forward direction. Um, MPU6000 has a pretty low noise. It's a solid performer. I think it's a good choice for this board. Right here you've got this red wire is the receiver antenna. Uh, this one has an FR Sky receiver, and it's connected uh, by SPI, uh, which is the same way that the gyro is connected. In theory, that should give uh, lower latency from your control to the processor, um, and that's always good. And so I don't know if we're going to be able to feel that, but I'm going to be checking that out. Um, but happy to see that in boards like this. And then right down here, you can see these are the solder points where you're going to connect your camera to the flight controller and flight controller to the video transmitter. And check it out, there's an extra pin right here, TX2. That is an extra UART. And most of these uh, boards don't have any extra UARTs. The fact that this does is really cool. It means that you can hook it up to smart audio um, and not have to mess with little buttons on your video transmitter to change channels, um, that sort of thing. That is really cool if you were going to pair it with that kind of video transmitter. But really, you could also you just use this uh, for anything that you want to wire up. That's cool. Now, these solder points are really small. You're going to need a fine-tipped uh, soldering iron to get in there. Um, so hopefully that's not too much of a problem. But they are through-hole um, soldering points, not tiny little pads. And I think that is the way to go. If you can get the wire into these tiny holes, you're going to have a much more solid connection. I'm going to build it with this Beta 65S frame. I've got the 7x16 motors here and a Wolf WT07 uh, camera. These are Ishin 4-blade props. And it's going to be pretty much the same as this. 
if you have watched my channel, you've seen a lot of videos of this build. I absolutely love this. I took this to so many races uh, over the winter. Uh, freestyle just, just handles so well. And I think the power to weight ratio on these 7 uh, by 16 motors is just so good. So I love this build. And also, I have a lot of experience with this build. And pretty much the only thing that will be different is the flight controller. This one is version 1.1 of the Beta FPV F3 flight controller. Uh, with OSD, I got it because it was one of the first flight controllers with OSD and S-Bus. And um, it's been a really good flight controller. I've had no problems with this. And so um, I should be able to make a pretty direct comparison trying this out. Um, if it's as good as this, it's going to be a fantastic product. And if it's better, then awesome. Here it is all built. You can see it does have pink and blue running lights, uh, which are on solid when it is armed. And it looks pretty cool, but that is a difference from the F3 board by Beta FPV, which has solid green running lights, which you can see here. Um, and I wanted to say a few more things about the build. First of all, yes, the solder points on this camera are a pain to work with. They're so small. Um, you know, I like to be able to see the space between uh, my solder connections when I'm checking everything over, and you can hardly even see any space between them. Uh, it's so close together. Uh, in a future version of this board, it would sure be easier to work with if those pads were spread out. But of course, once you get it set up, uh, hopefully you don't have to deal with it again for a while. Uh, speaking of setting it up, the binding process for this receiver is a little different than normal. Um, instead of holding the button while you plug in the battery, which is always kind of a juggling act, uh, you can just plug it in and then press and hold. Uh, the button's actually on the bottom, I think. Press and hold to bind, so that is really nice. And uh, this receiver I didn't mention, but it does support telemetry, sending data like voltage back to your transmitter if you want to do that. Uh, and it supports RSSI, uh, so that is really nice on a board um, in a build like this. So I'm not going to go into detail right now about the Betaflight setup that I did on here. Uh, but I will say that it's basically the Project Mockingbird tune. If you've never heard of Project Mockingbird, check out the link below. It's basically a bunch of settings that you can apply to turn your Betaflight Whoop uh, into just the best flying thing that it could possibly be. Check that out. Um, the PID values from Project Mockingbird are super high because these motors have a lot of built-in latency. They can only speed up so fast, and they don't do powered braking the way big, powerful uh, brushless motors would do, and so you can get away with a different tune. And the reason I mention all of that right now is because I set it up that way with the Mockingbird PIDs, and for the first time in a brushed whoop like this, those PIDs uh, were just too high. It actually didn't fly stable, and if I put air mode on, it would just start climbing and climbing faster and faster. Uh, it was really weird. I thought maybe it was an issue with the motors, or the frame wasn't in perfect condition. I swapped all of that out. It was definitely just the settings. I had to lower the PID significantly um, on this board compared to on my other board. Uh, and that was the only difference. So that was super interesting. Uh, as you saw in the flight video, I got it to fly pretty well, but uh, it's super interesting because unless I'm mistaken, it implies that these motors are actually reacting faster with this board than on the F3 board or other uh, boards like this that I've tried. And the only reason I can think why that would be is the giant FETs on this, uh, providing more power, more instantaneous power to these motors, uh, making them react faster. I don't know. I have to do more testing to, to try to verify if that is in fact the case, but it is at least super interesting. And if you are setting up one of these uh, and it's not super stable with those really high PIDs, try bringing them down. Uh, especially the P and I values, um, and that worked for me. So yeah, it looks pretty good so far. I certainly had a lot of fun flying this. Um, feels like an upgrade over my F3 board for sure, but I, you know, I don't want to jump to too many conclusions. It'll take me a while to really get to know this product, and I want to do some more tests between this and the F3 board, see what differences I can find. If that's something that you are interested in, then go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, and if I have more to say about it in the future, you can look for a part two video on this product. Uh, in the meantime, have fun. Thanks for watching.